Now, when you were 30, you recorded with Notorious B.I.G. Mm -hmm. um, the World is Filled. You did a couple records with him, but The World is Filled is the, was the first one? And it's, it's probably the most classic. That's one the too. one, yeah. yeah. Um, but the, the, like your monologue at the end, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I was in a moment that day, man. Mm -hmm. I was in a situation. Okay. And I'm sure you've been in these situations. You, you was you, talking to a specific nigga. You a, you a pit bull. Mm -hmm. So you've been in a situation where these rappers, you're going to do a collaboration song. Mm -hmm. And somehow you second to last or you last. And motherfuckers have done their damn thing. Mm. You, you've been in a situation, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so, we're back and clean up. So as an MC, at this moment, like, it's, it's, just, it's just everybody's in the room oblivious to your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And you're like, fuck, everybody's gassed this track and it's my turn. I know I'm gonna get it, I know, but you like, I got it. Like, you can't go in there, mumble, you, like, it's the moment. Mm -hmm. Everything is, the song is, so I, here I am in the studio. When we get there, uh, Puffy had already recorded his verse. He mm -hmm. probably had a coach or something, somebody wrote it. Somebody wrote it. Ah, through it, because right. he got the but first Puffy's verse. Puffy's very good at rapping. And this, this, this Don't was, worry about right, this no, was when right he, checks. Right he didn't have a lot of experience back then, though. Right. No, that, that, this was big, this was big second album. Yeah, he, like, Puff didn't have a verse on Puff the first was album. Puff green, he was green. Yeah, this was like. So look, so he was so proud. Carl, right. Carl Thomas did the hook, right. the beat was dope. So Puff. Shout out to Carl Thomas, my oh, smoking man. partner. <laughs> Puff hit play, because uh -huh. he wanted everybody to hear his verse. He like, right. and they like, oh, Make you, it you, hot. Know, you know, you hot, yeah. Right. So that's it. So now Biggie do the thing where he don't touch no pen or paper. Mm -hmm. Before all the rappers was doing that, mm -hmm. only motherfuckers I knew that did that was Jay-Z and Big. Like and, Big and they right. would sit there, and then to, if I had to describe it, I think they're writing like there's a, ink, there's a pen and paper inside right. your forehead. Because mm -hmm. right. you're writing it, right. but you're memorizing it. Or something. Right. I don't, so it ain't a freestyle. It's a vibe. So Biggie does his shit. I'm over there. I ain't wrote shit. We, it, they drinking. They smoking. It's, mm -hmm. Everybody laughing at shit. Right, right. And Big goes in there and says, I'm going to do this shit in one take. And he goes, when the Remy's in my system, ain't no telling. And he fucks up. Mm -hmm. And he goes, no, no, watch, watch this, watch this. <laughs> and the next take, he just run that shit. Right. And everybody's in the studio going, ooh. Like, right. And now it's only one verse left. <laughs> <laughs> so I got my one homeboy with me, my boy uh -huh. P. And I'm sitting there like blank paper. Dang. The whole, I, I, we got to leave with a song. And now you know how Puff work. Puff like, right. <laughs> Puff like a general in the studio. Right. Like, we're going to make something hot. Right. A, a motherfucker is gonna hang out the window or something. Like he's, right. he's serious. So I'm like, I asked my boy, I said, what you think I should do? He said, now go listen to the song. He said, the hook says, the world is filled with pimps and hoes. Mm -hmm. I just tell you about those I know. Mm. He said, neither one of them rapped about pimps or hoes. Mm. He was like, just rap about, the, do what, he said, do what the hook says. Right. So I say, I thought it was a real life story of some pimps and hoes that I know. And I kind of brought the song home and made the hook in the song kind of makes sense. And in the end, I'm telling you a story. Like, the people who I talked about kind of got mad at me in real life. But <laughs> <laughs> you, was, you was talking from the heart. Yeah, but, but I didn't say no names. And right. that just Only was they a story. knew the story. They should feel honored. But that's the genius of Puff and, and Big in that moment is that, you know, again, Puff had you in there because he understood what Too Short represented. Mm -hmm. New York didn't know what Too Short represented. You know, when, when, when Big was talking about uh, not from Houston but a rap a lot, only real hip hop cats understood what rap right, a lot right, was. Right. When he had you on the album, niggas in New York was not rocking with Too Short, but Puff understood. And he knew that it, whether or not him and Big was going to talk about what the hook was on, Too Short was going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. And, and Big, t he always told me, man, from the day I met him, when I met him, I didn't even know he was Big. I, I met him, he just, he met me with a simple, um, he was like, yo, he called me over to the, to the limo. It was at the mm -hmm. Outcast picnic. Outcast used to throw a big ass picnic in Atlanta every mm -hmm. year. And he called me over to the limo and he was like, something like, yo, yo, kid, yo, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, fuck with you. Something like that. Right, right, right. He didn't even yeah. say, what's up, I'm big. Right, right, he just right. said, I'm like, okay, what's up? Left it at that. So later on, when he blew the fuck up, we was on the tour bus one day mm -hmm. smoking. Uh -huh. And he's like, you remember that time at the limo? He's like, that was me. And I'm like, oh shit, I remember okay. that shit. So Word up. I mean, him and Jay, they was like, man, he was like, I swear, both of them kind of told me, it was like, man, this probably was 10 motherfuckers bumping y'all in New yeah. York, and we was one of That's them. real. <laughs> the, 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 the street niggas was bumping too short. Like, the niggas who was rapping, but also had a foot in the street life, fucking with the gangsters. They was fucking with Houston music. They was fucking with too short. You know what I'm saying? Certain shit. Yeah, it, Puff, it, when Puff was trying to do Snoop and Dre. He was trying to do a New York version of, okay. he, of Snoop and Dre with the, with the samples, and you know, he was inspired and, and, by and that. the gangster shit. Yeah. It's all good, you know, because I mean, it, it in hip hop, you have to have a, uh, you know, elements. Like I had to have certain things of that I 
I listened to in New York, and like, like I, my my whole shit, the, mm -hmm. the 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 foundation of Too Short is Spoonie G mm -hmm. mixed with Melly Mel, and I'm just kind of like, right. that's that, that's who I only gravitate to. I'm like, when I'm right. writing, I'm like, how would you know? Melly Mel is is very, he gives you a visual, you see it. The ghetto, I've heard you describe the ghetto as the Oakland version of the message. Yeah, I which mean, which Melly Mel wrote. Man, Melly Mel, just, the message changed my life. Right, and then like, Puff went on to send the I message was, later. I was, a, I was a rapper about two years playing mm -hmm. around on the mic before the message, just just messing around. Mm -hmm. And it was all fun and games and little rhymes and shit, and the message came out, and I was walking down the street with a boom box mm -hmm. by myself when the shit came out on the radio. Like broken glass everywhere. I literally, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I stopped in my mm. tracks and listened by myself on the streets and listened <laughs> to this whole damn song going, for the first time ever, I heard so many New York rap records in the party mm -hmm. and this shit say ho. That's the first time I ever could see New York. Mm. I saw, I'm like, damn. And I just, mm. and it was, it took two seconds. I was like, mm. I'm about to start rapping about Oakland. <laughs> Let's talk, before we get out of here, a little bit about Tupac, because you had the honor and the privilege of having a relationship with this man. Mm -hmm. I met him once as a fan. I smoked a blunt with Biggie and Tupac in a nightclub. That's dope. Back in the wow. day with Funkmaster Flex with DJing. Um, Pac's born in New York. Mm -hmm. You had spent some time in DMV, right? I was born there. Born DMV. Yeah, got Pac, a lot of Baltimore in. Yeah, he went, he went to school in DMV, Jada Pinkett and them. Cut his teeth in the Bay, became Tupac in the Bay, mm -hmm. but then became a superstar in LA. He wanted that. He wanted that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Tell us about your relationship with Pac. He would have also equally have gotten that in New York. Because mm -hmm. he, I think at first he wanted it more in New York. He did. And part of his whole fuck New York thing was about so, that, that resentment. Yep, it really was. It mm -hmm. really was. And so Pac, to me, was mm -hmm. the little homie. Mm -hmm. I, um, like you said, you pull up in the Bay and uh, Dale was working at the record store. Right. I bought a keyboard at a music store from Shot G, mm -hmm. when his name was like Greg or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Shock G, I just ran He was Shock G. G, he was a key, he told me, he was like, I'm from- In Florida, he live in Florida now. He, but he was like, I'm from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. he, was like, he was like, he knew about me, he was like, man, I pimped my way across here and, and I ended up in the music store and mm -hmm. I got, I'm funky and all this stuff and he was serious. Mm -hmm. So, um, I had a thing with Shock, like mm -hmm. we, that one little meeting and kind of knew, mm -hmm. you know, respect. Mm -hmm. And he immediately, like it wasn't long from the time that I saw him, that he became this underground. Like, mm -hmm. it was quick, do what you like, and they, they started coming mm -hmm. out. So, um, Tupac was a little homie in their crew. Mm -hmm. And our crews were really close. This is underground, and the guys that I rode with, we weren't, like, E-40's crew and my crew were connected to the streets through cocaine. Okay. But Digital Underground and Too Short, we was strictly connected through music. Okay. We, we like we had musicians. I had musicians. They had musicians. Right. Some of the guys. Shock is an incredible musician. Like two musicians, mm -hmm. uh, Shorty B that played guitar and bass, mm -hmm. and Pee Wee that played keyboards mm -hmm. and everything else. Yeah. They both played for Digital Underground and played on tons of my songs. Mm -hmm. Lots of shit, like both groups. And through those two dudes, that's where the Tupac connection came. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, I had this thing, bro. Like, I kind of still got it. But I had this thing where my friends don't like my friends don't like my music friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can never mix them up. Right. So I can't I can't be hanging with Tupac and then be like, oh, come roll me real quick mm -hmm. and take him over there because then they're gonna be like, oh man, you Tupac. Like they're gonna try to like get you to do stuff that, right. Right. that I'm like I don't want to be responsible for. Right. So I would keep the shit separated. And it, as soon as I finish rapping and dealing with music people, I'm jet, bled, jet, bled, blast over to where I'm at mm -hmm. and don't bring nothing rap with me. Because mm -hmm. they be, you know, they, it's just funny, man. They, they be like, man, it's my own homies, right? Mm -hmm. They are like, bro, you be on that rapper weirdo shit. <laughs> I'm like, right, I'm that's like, me. Man. I'm the rapper weirdo shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm so I saying. know what you're talking about. I know but, what you're talking about. But I'm hanging with all these little gangsters, all these little homies that do shit. They like, mm -hmm. you're a fucking rapper. Like, you know, it's, right. a, it's a thing. So, um, uh, the times when I did get to hang out with Tupac, it'd be Shorty B, Pee Wee, pull up on the studio. Um, you know, just, I, I, I'd like to tell people that every time I saw Tupac, he had like probably like four or five different distinct personas, and it would ran, ran, he would randomly be one of them. Mm -hmm. Like, like I knew him for a while before I saw him do an interview on BET, and he was talking all this militant, you know, black, Panther history type of stuff, and I was sitting there watching that, going, "What the fuck is that?" Like, like, <laughs> like I never seen him do that shit. But right. then other times, after that, you be with him, and he start 
drop, dropping some little knowledge or something. Like he yeah. could get quick into something. He had the knowledge. He had the book knowledge. He had the street knowledge. The other that. times, you know, like in the Biggie movie where he like, oh, walking with the lap. Yeah. He'd be that guy too, like fucking uh, blunt, cigarette, Hennessy, mm -hmm. and he'd just be that guy sometimes talking shit, the, the, that Tupac. Then other times he'd be like this, you know. The glasses Tupac. So like a spiritual kind right. of brother who super wise. And Me kinda, against the world Tupac. Yeah, for the ladies and right. shit. And, I mean, it just was, I, I hung out with Tupac one day where, you know, he was gangster Tupac. And I'm like, man, I, I was like, man, I don't, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> no, about that. He's like, and then other times, I've I, so much Tupac, man. Like, mm. Tupac was in Atlanta the same time as me. Mm -hmm. We get to Atlanta in the mid 90s. He was shooting cops in Atlanta. He, he, did, he really did that. Yeah. And he was like a, a, a mythical guy, like, like literally, um, like, like women. Mm -hmm. Like Tupac would leave like a trail of like women who were like advertising for him and shit. Like, <laughs> like they was I don't know. He's like magic man. He's kind of dude who, if we all in the room, uh -huh. and no matter who's the hierarchy, let him talk. Like let him, right. let, him let him have the stage because it's it just like Ice T or somebody. Like mm -hmm. don't try to out talk him. Let when, him. What you just said about when he's in the room, let him talk. That's Yasin Bey most deaf vibes. Mm -hmm. That's what I think about when I'm most deaf. When he's in the room, <laughs> he got the floor let because him. you want to hear from him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he was that guy. That's that's the best thing I could say is, you know, that's the guy that you would like kind of like uh, be really famous around. Mm -hmm. And for a moment you go, well, I don't, don't want to be famous. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm going to go play this little side, side right. thing and watch the show. Get it, call me young, go get it. They can't fuck with it, my slow away.